So welcome to the Long Men Caves, everyone. And we are in China during the time of the Tang Dynasty. And we are going to be studying these beautiful and enormous sculptures that are carved into uh, the mountains here. And not only just the sculptures, but caves and all different types of objects, relief sculptures. It's really one of the most impressive, I think, uh, art experiences that you can have, and definitely one of the standout art um, pieces in China. So moving on to context. And um, so College Board has identified this piece within the Tang Dynasty, but I wanted to start off with a little bit of background first. So the caves basically are, or were started during an earlier dynasty called the Northern Wei Dynasty. And it was the most powerful Chinese dynasty uh, in existence at the time in the 480s ACE. Um, and it occurred when there were other dynasties as well in different parts of China. So it's before the reunification of China as one entity. So the emperor of the Northern Wang dynasty moved the capital of that dynasty to a place called Luoyang, and again, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, where the caves are. And it's really considered to be the cradle of Chinese civilization. And they started building administrative buildings and other types of more government things, but then they started to build temples, monasteries, and they started to create these caves, this cave temple at Longmen. And so that's an image that you're seeing on the right is the original uh, art piece, and it's called the Central Bingyang Cave. It is not one of your images for College Board, but I did want to show it to you. And it is the historical Buddha, like the beginnings, basically, with two bodhisattvas. That vocab term applies to this piece, the bodhisattva. And it is an enlightened being who has put off entering paradise in order to help others attain enlightenment. So they've already reached enlightenment, but again, they are waiting and assisting others. So that is, again, a vocab term that's incredibly important, the bodhisattva, an enlightened being and who is trying to help others attain enlightenment. So that's where these long men caves start with this dynasty. Now, continuing on, we are going to be talking about the Tang dynasty now. Um, but first, the, the long men caves are, are located on two sides of a river. And I have the river named there. And the Tang dynasty is known as the age of international Buddhism, where you have monks of all different ethnic background, Buddhist monks traveling through Asia and influencing really the art and Buddhism here in China. And you have the Tang Dynasty really using Buddhist images to assert their own power and authority. And in particular, the Tang Emperor who was very dominant of the land and the people, he is using this image of what's called the Verokana Buddha, which is the second kind of written section on your slide. The Verokana Buddha is known as the primordial Buddha who has power over all other Buddhas. So it makes sense then that this Tang emperor is using that particular Buddha image in order to convey his own power over all the land and people. So it's kind of a perfect match between religious image and political message. And as you know, the emperors kind of came and went and different successors ruled, those emperors added on to the caves in order to express their own power as well. So the Longmen Caves, you have, you know, they start off with the Northern Wei Dynasty and then continue on through the Tang Dynasty. And as the emperors live, they create their own imagery, they die, another emperor comes into power, creates his own imagery, dies, and so on and so on. So you have this extensive, like one mile of caves that um, 
showcase different political leaders and their additions to the art piece, and then they express their political messages and uh, art during their reign. So content-wise, here are your three images from College Board, these specific ones. Uh, you see the main image with that primordial Buddha, the Varukana Buddha, uh, done by that original Tang Dynasty emperor. And then you have the two lower images, which one on the right is a close-up of that same Varukana Buddha, and the other on the left is a guardian figure, and you can see some of the caves and niche sculptures. So in total, there are 2,300 caves and niches. Again, over this, you know, two sides of the river, mile long of art. It is all related to Buddhism. There are 110,000 Buddhist stone statues here. There are 60 stupas. And in another piece or in class, we'll be talking about a stupa, which is a hemispherical structure that contains Buddha's relics. So Buddha's relics and things associated with Buddha are at this site. So it is an incredibly sacred site. Um, relief sculptures as well, both high and low relief. And um, I'll talk specifically about the uh, sculptures as we get to them. But that Varukana Buddha is about 55 feet tall. Simplified features. Um, that creates kind of this sense of that simplicity about them that the message gets across, I think, in an easier fashion, a more dignified fashion, uh, very calm, very peaceful, serene. And that's going to, of course, convey the message that the political leader of Tang Dynasty wants to convey. Let me see. There we have a close up. That primordial uh, Buddha with power over all. And then he has monks beside him and bodhisattvas and then they would represent more of you know allegiance to him the buddha and then you know therefore representing people and his subjects being following him with um and being supporters of him clearly and again these are of course religious but it's almost like these, these figures have more of a political message than anything else. Again, serene, calm, um, huge. You can really see scale with the people in the Buddha here and clear expression of power and control of the Tang dynasty with this particular Buddha. And in other pieces that we do in class, we'll get more specific about the symbolism of Buddha, uh, some of the hand gestures and the iconic kind of imagery according to, with Buddha that you can also apply here, but we'll talk about that together in class. The other images that the College Board wants you to know with this particular piece of the Longman Caves are the guardian figures. And it's such a contrast to the Buddha figures because the guardian figures are way more muscular. The, the poses are more animated, more energetic, stronger, um, you've got these great kind of almost contrapposto poses there and their facial features are, you know, strong and uh, energetic and, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to kind of cross them in any way because you can tell that they would be very much protective of the Buddha. Now, the image on the lower right is the one to be for college board. Uh, the one on the up, the upper image I've included, there's an extra figure there on the left. He's one of the heavenly kings. There's a king associated with all the compass point directions, and he's the northern guardian. But on the on the figure on the right, and I'm pointing to him, he's the one in your college board image. He does have a name, Rajpani, but you can know him as the thunderbolt holder or just general guardian figure and he is an early bodhisattva and just a guardian of buddha but what a great image to capture the devotion to the buddha or the devotion to you know the political emperor and the dedication the protection the strength and power of this political figure 
uh, of the Tang Dynasty. I think ultimately that's what this is really for. So for the Longmen Caves, what I would use for, I'm gonna go back to the first image here. For Longmen Caves, it, they're definitely pilgrims visiting this, you know, Buddhist pilgrims. But, but I, and so we definitely for function wanna put this as sacred site. But I also think we have to put down political uh, for function. You know, the propaganda and the political association that these emperors are doing here using religious iconography, like this early primordial Buddha, in order to convey your power and strength as emperor. So political, sacred site, religious site to be um, our function for sure. Uh, formal qualities, you could do form. Again, the form of the primordial Buddha, control, wisdom, strength, power, and then versus the form of the guardian figures, you know, again, strong, but in a different way, uh, protective, devoted. Uh, it's all expressed through their the forms of their bodies. I think absolutely that could work. You could do proportion because the body of the, the primordial Buddha here you're seeing on the right, he's so large in comparison, like that hierarchy of scale, and then that transfers on to your political leader of the Tang Dynasty. Uh, so again, Longmen Caves is an interesting piece because not only is it religious, but it's also being used as a political tool to express that particular dynasty's power. So again, Longmen Caves from China and from College Board uh, listed under the Tang Dynasty.